Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on where in the world you're zooming from. My name is Philip Etter, and I'll be talking to you briefly today about achieving fast inference times for enterprise-scale multi-label search problems. In particular, I'm going to be focusing on a specific type of model, a sparse multi-label ranking tree, and I'll describe a technique that we've used to obtain substantial reductions in inference time with no cost to accuracy. I should note that this presentation is pre-recorded, which means I unfortunately cannot answer questions during the talk. However, I encourage anyone with questions to reach out to me via email, and I will do my best to answer them. Let's begin the talk by clarifying our problem setting. We're interested in multi-label ranking. This means in practice that a user will present us with a search query say, for example, a bunch of text describing a product. And we give this query to a model that we've trained on example data. Our objective is for this model to return a set of relevant results in as short a time as possible. Of course, the latency here is the important factor. It may be easy to achieve good latency when the number of labels is small. But for real applications, the number of labels can be on the order of millions or even potentially on the order of hundreds of millions. In this enterprise scale setting, achieving good inference latency can be a very challenging technical problem. Because low latency can be very challenging for neural network models to achieve, there has been a recent surge of interest in multi-label ranking trees with linear activations. Linear multi-label ranking trees tend to be extremely fast when compared to their alternatives, both in training and also in prediction. Moreover, they typically achieve prediction accuracy, which is more or less comparable to their neural network alternatives, which means that they're extremely attractive for enterprise scale problems. Different variations of this type of model have appeared in several extreme multi-label search frameworks, such as Amazon Pecos, Parable, Bonsai, Napkin XC, and others. Despite this, there's always room for more reduction to inference time. And this is especially true on extreme scales. On these scales, even these lightweight models can sometimes struggle to meet the demands of real applications. But before we talk about our technique for reducing inference time, let's quickly talk about how these tree models actually work. Essentially, every node in this tree represents a cluster of search results. As one might expect, Parents are the union of their children clusters. The nodes at the very bottom of the tree represent individual search results. These individual search results are referred to as labels. When the user presents us with a query, that query is converted into a sparse vector using an appropriate sparse embedding. The edges of the tree can then be used to determine the relevance of a cluster of labels to that query in question. Essentially, each edge going from a parent to a child in the tree is a learned probabilistic model with linear activations. So, for example, it might be a sparse support vector machine, or perhaps a sparse logistic regression. These models on the tree edges accept a query vector and then return the likelihood that a child in the tree is relevant to that query. The predicted relevance of the labels at the bottom of the tree to the query vector is the composition of all of the likelihoods on the path from the labels at the bottom of the tree to the root of the tree at the top. This means that to return the top k search results exactly, we would have to compute likelihoods for all labels. In practice, however, computing all likelihoods is not tractable. So instead, it is common to use a beam search approach where instead of computing all likelihoods, we instead traverse the tree from top to bottom and only search the top k clusters on every layer. When the beam search reaches the bottom of the tree, we will have found a relatively good approximation to the top k most relevant search results. Now, with all the fundamentals explained, let's take a look at how we can massively speed up inference times by using some sparse linear algebra. Generally, instead of having just a single query, we will have a batch of different queries from different users all made at roughly the same time. We will refer to this as the batch setting. In this setting, we will essentially have a sparse query matrix rather than just a single sparse query vector. 
And of course, each query is likely to be relevant to different labels on the tree, and hence will also have a distinct beam search profile. In this simplified figure, for example, we have three different queries at the top of the tree, and the beam search for each one isolates different parts of the tree with the relevant labels. While we will primarily examine the batch setting, we should note that the real-time setting, namely the setting with only a single query as input, is simply a special case, and hence all of our optimizations apply without any substantial changes. The starting point for our optimizations is to note that the act of propagating predictions from one layer of the tree to the next can be expressed as a sparse matrix multiplication. This is due to the linear activations of the constituent models of the tree. With beam search thrown in, this becomes a masked sparse matrix multiplication. Let's take a peek at what this might look like. First, on the left here, we have our query input, which is a sparse matrix whose rows correspond to sparse queries and whose columns correspond to query features. Next, for each layer of the tree, we also have a sparse weight matrix. Every column of this weight matrix corresponds to the activation weights of the model on a tree edge on that layer. The product of these two matrices produces a matrix of activations, which is then fed into a post-processor function to yield predictions. However, due to beam search, we only need a very small fraction of these predictions for every one of these sparse matrix multiplications. Hence, the name masked matrix multiplication. We found that this single operation tends to be the performance bottleneck for these tree-based models. You can expect around 95% of inference time to be spent simply performing this type of matrix multiplication, Hence, it is a ripe target for optimization. The primary contribution of her paper is a special matrix data structure for the weight matrices to make performing this multiplication substantially more efficient. First, we group all of the columns in the weight matrix by their corresponding parents in the tree. This naturally forms contiguous column chunks in the weight matrix. Because the columns in each chunk correspond to very similar clusters in the tree, they tend to have vertical sparsity patterns with substantial overlaps. Moreover, because of the way that beam search works, the slices of the activation matrix that we need to compute will always horizontally span an entire chunk. Hence, computing a single slice in the activation matrix corresponds to taking the matrix product of a query vector and a chunk in the weight matrix. So our method focuses on making this primitive computation as efficient as possible. Here, we have a pictorial diagram of how we propose this operation be performed. On the left is a row of the sparse query matrix stored as a sorted array of column value pairs. On the right is a chunk of the weight matrix. The contents of every row of the chunk are stored as contiguous column value pairs in memory. The chunk also stores a lookup table. This lookup table allows fast access to the rows of the chunk. The lookup table might be implemented as either a sorted list or perhaps as a hash table. We use this lookup table to compute the intersection of the non-zero column indices in the query row and the non-zero row indices in the chunk. Once we have this intersection, we sum all of the relevant chunk rows weighted by the corresponding entries in the query row. We then write the result to the desired location in memory. We conclude the discussion of our method by talking about some optimization considerations. Note that using a hash map to compute non-zero overlap between query and chunk incurs an additional memory cost to storing the model. In comparison, using a sorted array of pointers incurs no extra memory cost over a simple compressed column storage format. However, to compensate, hash maps tend to be faster in practice. Another very important optimization is to perform all vector chunk products in order of chunk. This helps ensure that the contents of a chunk can stay in cache as long as possible while they are needed. This reduces the overhead of reloading chunks into cache whenever they are unnecessarily flushed. Finally, we should note that everything we've presented here is trivially parallelizable. 
one can parallelize this computation over vector chunk products, as separate threads only need to read from chunks, but never need to write to them. To conclude this presentation, let's take a look at some of the performance benchmarks that we've done on Amazon Pecos. To ensure that we've only captured the effect that our chunk multiplication technique has on performance, we here compare chunk multiplication to sparse vector dot products using four different lookup techniques, hash maps, binary search, dense lookups, and marching pointers. We've already mentioned hash maps and binary search. However, in contrast, dense lookup operates by temporarily loading the sparse lookup table into a dense array, allowing for amortized constant time random access. This method is used by Parable. Marching pointers, on the other hand, iterates one by one through a sparse lookup table to find all possible intersections. Between these four methods, we cover all implementations used in current tree-based frameworks such as Pecos, Parable, Bonsai, etc. We see here that we obtain substantial performance boosts across a wide selection of common datasets, as well as across all overlap methods that I previously mentioned, including marching pointers, hash maps, dense lookups, and binary search. These benchmarks were run on publicly available datasets with pre-trained models that we have also made publicly available. Moreover, our benchmarking tools are completely open source to aid in reproducibility. As we can see, the performance boost we've managed to achieve in a batch setting ranges from two times on the lower end to around 10 times on the higher end. The benchmarks shown here are specifically for a set of models trained with branching factor of eight and run on an M5 8x large AWS instance. However, we obtain similar speedups across other tree topologies, as well as across other AWS instance types. Our paper presents a much more complete analysis of the performance implications. In addition to the batch setting, we should note briefly that we also obtain substantial speedups in the real-time single query setting, as seen in this chart. While the top speedups are slightly less dramatic than those in the batch setting, they are still close and we still achieve speedups ranging from 2x to 8x. Moreover, just as before, these speedups hold across a large range of datasets, tree topologies, and instance types. We should note that all of the results we've just presented have been only for a single thread. But naturally, in enterprise-scale settings, one wants to make use of multiple cores for maximum performance. Hence, we want to make mention of the performance effect of thread count. As seen here in this chart, it seems that the speedup is relatively persistent across many different thread counts. In general, we see similar performance boosts when operating on 32 threads as when operating on only a single thread. Before we conclude this presentation, I would like to make mention of a final benchmark that we performed on a semantic search problem with over 500 million labels. In these benchmarks here, we were able to achieve a sub-millisecond latency with chunked binary search on this real enterprise scale problem. Note on the specific problem that the addition of our chunked matrix technique improves performance by nearly a factor of 10. This demonstrates the scalability of our technique. Before we move on, it is worth noting that this problem is actually one of the few examples where binary search with chunked matrices outperforms hash maps with chunked matrices. With that, I would like to finish by pointing out that masked sparse chunk multiplication, or MSCM as we refer to it in the paper, gives a substantial performance boost in essentially every single scenario. This performance boost is consistent across tree topology, computer specifications, batch and real-time single query settings, sparse iteration methods, and even to massive datasets with over 500 million labels. Moreover, there is no compromise to accuracy, and the implementation is relatively simple. We would therefore suggest that anybody working with these models in settings where performance is critical would benefit from our work. Indeed, we've already implemented this technique into Amazon Pecos, and we have since switched to using it as our default inference pipeline for prediction. If you are interested in the implementation details, we highly suggest that you take a look at the open source implementation in Pecos. With that, I'd like to thank everyone for coming, as well as thank my co-authors for their help and support. If anyone has any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me at paeditor 
at stanford.edu. Thank you.